Hello and welcome to another Restrap Bike Packing Tips video. Today we're going to run through, I guess it's essentially the worst that can potentially happen while you're out bike packing. So it's, it's things like preparing for the worst possible weather, um, weird mechanicals and just anything else that can potentially go wrong. So first of all, we'll have a little look at the clothing that you might want to bring on a, an autumn or winter bikepacking trip that you wouldn't necessarily choose to bring in the summer. Um, first thing that I always do in terms of just adding a bit of extra warmth, it's amazing what a, a really thin base layer will do in terms of boosting warmth. It's, as you can see, there's, there's nothing to it. You can virtually see through it, but it really helps just trap air next to your skin. And that underneath your normal jersey or a thicker jersey makes the world a difference. I also really like to bring leg warmers actually. Um, what's really nice is first thing in the morning, you set off, it's cold, and they add that little bit of extra warmth. Actually, today it's a really nice warm day. You could probably get away with just riding in shorts for the rest of the day. So it's nice to have that little bit of extra, extra flexibility in, uh, in what you're wearing. The other thing that I, I tend to do on winter trips that I might not do in the summer is I'll, I'll always bring some kind of waterproof, but in the winter I like to go for just a really heavyweight one with a decent hood. So one of the differences between say this waterproof and kind of like your classic cycling rain capers. First of all, this is quite a lot longer, um, which means that it doesn't fit quite as nicely when you, you're riding on the bike, but it gives you so much more protection when you're standing around uh, the rest of the time. And the hood is decent quality hood and it's actually big enough to go over a helmet as well. So there's, there's been plenty of times where I'll ride with the hood pulled up for a little bit of extra warmth. One of the downsides is the hood does tend to flap around a little bit in the wind when you're riding. Um, so it's a personal preference kind of thing. But uh, for me, I'll, I'll always carry a big waterproof. One final piece of clothing that I'll always bring with me. Um, actually, I tend to bring something nearly all year round, but especially in winter, is an extra warm layer. I've got two options here. Um, my preferred one is, is a synthetic insulated jacket. This one's kind of furry on the inside with a windproof outer. You can get others that are kind of like synthetic down essentially. But it's amazing how much extra warmth that, that brings. Down in lots of ways is, is better than synthetic. It packs down smaller for its relative weight, it's warmer. But it's got a few downsides to it as well. Um, as soon as it gets wet it can be pretty useless really you can get some really nice posh down jackets now that have got like a hydrophobic coating to them so they can cope with the water but even then after a while they, they do tend to wet out so for, for that reason i tend not to, to want to, to take them on a bike packing trip partly because i'm worried about getting them wet but also they're, they're less practical then to, to wear while you're riding So I reckon one of the questions that we get asked the most at Restrap is whether our kit is waterproof. And in general, anything with a roll top, so our dry bags and our panniers are completely waterproof. They're seam sealed, so water isn't gonna get in there. Um, if you take something like our frame bag, then the fabric itself is waterproof, but it isn't seam sealed. So where we've got stitching, then theoretically water can creep in. And more fundamentally with, with all of our products, but particularly these, then obviously as soon as you're opening, opening the, uh, the zip to get anything in or out, then, then water can get in. So one thing that I always do is, is actually, if there's anything that you really need to keep dry, like your phone or, or other electronics, then it's always worthwhile just popping them in a sandwich bag or a small dry bag to, um, to keep them dry. One thing that you will need to do is think about how you're managing your wet kit as well. So socks is a, is a really good example. Um, I'll tend to bring just one single spare pair of socks with me, um, even for multiple days. And it doesn't feel very nice first thing in the morning, but pull on the wet socks to, to ride in each day. And then that just means that you've always got one dry pair of socks to, to put on in the evening, which is, is significantly nicer than come day two evening when you've now got two pairs of wet socks and, and nothing dry to put on. Also, it's worth thinking about where you're gonna carry your wet kit on the bike. Um, the one that we've got here today, there's obviously multiple panniers, so it's relatively easy to, to split your kit up and you can use one pannier for, for wet kit, one for dry. Um, but if you're doing a slightly more traditional bikepacking setup, a bit more minimalist, then you've only really got two options. You've got your bar bag and your, your saddle bag. Um, so either be really careful about how you're packing those. The other way to do it is just bring a spare dry bag so you can separate things in that saddle bag or, or in the bar bag as well. And either of those solutions works pretty well, actually. 
it's kind of things like having your, your um, waterproof jacket to hand and make sure that you can get those nice and easily as well. So uh, you're not having to completely empty your dry bag to, to get to that when it starts raining partway through the day as well. So uh, yeah, bikepacking, great outdoors, sleeping outside, all that kind of stuff. Um, I'm going to be honest, in the winter when it's cold and it's wet, then yeah, there's still times where that can be, be fantastic and you take a tent, you take the right size, size sleeping bag and we're all good. But there's no need to, to force yourself to do it. Um, to be honest, if it's absolutely tipping down with rain, the last thing I want to do is be sleeping outside in the middle of winter. And there's loads of other options really. Airbnb is fantastic. You've got an app, you can look for somewhere uh, on that that's going to be local to where you are. And you can do that on the fly as well. I've done whole trips where I've been away for a week and just booked one night ahead the whole time. And um, there's loads of other options as well. Obviously you've got B&Bs, hotels, or whatever else. Uh, another thing that I like making more use of in the winter is um, bothies. So again, if you don't know anything about Bothies, if you go to the Mountain Bothies Association website, then actually they've got a list of all of them. Most in the UK are in Scotland. There's a few dotted around England and Wales. And they're essentially a glorified um, hut in many, many circumstances. There's, there's not a lot of facilities there, but it's a roof over your head rather than canvas. And there can be some in some absolutely spectacular locations. So there, there are different options other than just sleeping out in the wild but there's still gonna be times that maybe you want to do that. And it's always worth being prepared to be able to do that, both in terms of your own safety, if you don't quite make it to your destination, but also it can be really good fun too. So in other videos, we've already kind of talked you through useful toolkit to, to take bike packing. It becomes even more fundamental when you're out in the winter, just because a, you're going to get really cold while you're, you're fixing whatever's gone wrong. And B, if you can't fix it, then you still have to get yourself out of that situation. And it's just not so nice to do it. Nobody minds walking with the bike in beautiful sunshine. It's not so fun when it's snowing. Um, so this is what I would take on a, a kind of a, a usual bike packing trip. In here, so I've got some zip ties. I've got gear cable, good quality multi-tool with all of the allen keys everything else that i need to fix my particular bike it's got a chain breaker on there as well oh yeah the other tool that i will usually bring with me is kind of a leatherman style tool the pliers can actually be really useful for for bodging a fair few things always make sure i've got a decent pump as well it's not the place for those tiny little little roadie ones that fit in your back pocket because I really don't want to be spending three hours pumping up my tyre when the, the weather's crap. I want to get it done, sorted and, and get moving again quickly. So this is about as small as I would want to go really. Lights, this time of year, it's probably got to the point where you'd want lights. So unless you're absolutely certain you're going to be at the pub, feet up by the fire by then, it's worth having at least some lights that you can be seen by. And usually I would actually probably bolster these with a decent front light as well that I can actually see by as well. So hopefully this video has given you some good tips on how to stay warm, comfortable and safe during the worst possible conditions that you're likely to find on, on a winter bike packing trip. While you're at it, then please do check out our playlist of other videos for, for other tips on how to have fun outdoors.